Hey you guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today uh, is one of those days, man. Um, I got a lot of stuff going on. But anyway, I had somebody talking next to me on the airplane. I just got back from Michigan and the person next to me was talking about putting your phone in airplane mode. Now this video isn't gonna be about medical, but I wanna discuss with you guys why um, they want you to put your phone in airplane mode and why some of us have been lied to a little bit. So the original thought is that your phone needs to be in airplane mode because it can interrupt communications between the tower and the jet. That is not true. They're on different, different bands, on different frequencies, not even close, all right, all right guys? And there are backup systems to backup systems for that. That's not the issue. The reason that your phone has got to, uh, or should be put on airplane mode, is because it talks to cell phone towers. That's the problem. So let me break it down for you guys. When a phone goes between cell phone towers or mobile phone towers, now cell or, or cell phone, it used to be a technology, okay? So we are not on cell networks anymore, okay? We are now on the 4G, 5G networks. So when we call them cell phones, they're not technically cell phones anymore. They're mobile phones. And they changed their terminology on purpose because cell was a structure of a, a mobile network, right? And that is old, outdated technology, guys. But it's still applicable to what I'm talking about here. So when your mobile phone goes between one place and another, Think of it as like circles. So your circle is around your phone and then the tower. And as you migrate between the two points, you you will lose some um, reception or signal strength from one antenna and you'll start picking up the next one. So that's where your circles kind of overlap. And when they overlap, your phone will communicate to the next tower saying this is my MAC address, uh, this is my network provider, and it will get the auth authentication to log into the next tower, all right? So there, your towers are spaced out, let's say every mile, every two miles, who knows? 5G towers have to be closer together, 4G, 3G, they could be further apart because as the frequency increases, uh, the distance between the towers has to be shorter. Although with a higher frequency, you can handle more data because there's more bumps, per se. Um, the towers have to be closer together. And with 5G, etc., things like buildings, walls, tend to interrupt your signal. Where at, Think of it like AM and FM radio. AM radio goes long distances because it's large, slow-moving waves versus FM, which is higher frequency, so there's more data, more sound, um, but FM can't go nearly as far as AM. AM, you can walk around inside a building with an AM radio, you'll probably pick up a signal. Whereas FM, you go a couple rooms into a building and you know it'll get all staticky and you might not get a signal. Well, the same thing kind of happens with cell phones. So now we're on 4G and 5G. Well, 5G can't go as far. And there's a lot of things that interrupt 5G signal, but that's not the point of this conversation. So basically guys, you're in an airplane and you have these cell phone towers, which are a certain distance apart. And as the technology increases, 4G and 5G, the towers have to be closer together and that creates problems. The average jet can have between 100 and 400, maybe even 500 devices that are talking to the cell phone networks, right? So as that airplane flies between one tower and to the next one, all those devices have to log off that tower and they have to log on to this tower here. And what that does is it creates kind of like a denial of service attack for like hacking. Whereas you occupy the uh, receiver to the point where it says, I can't handle anymore, and then it chops off communications. Well, if you have a bunch of jets flying in and out of an airport, and your devices are communicating, 
between towers, when you land and when you take off, jets are flying between 150 and 350 miles per hour. So jets, they don't take off at a leisurely angle. They take, take off at a kind of a steep, steep angle. And one of the reasons that they take off, take off at a steep, oh, I can't talk today, guys. One of the reasons they take off at a steeper angle is because that gets you out of cell phone reception area faster. Now, there's other, other reasons why they take off at steep angles too, but think about it this way. If you took off at a shallower angle, all those antennas that you cross on your journey before you get up above the, the ceiling height, um, you are logging on and logging off of every single one of those antennas. And most people travel at what, 60, 70 miles per hour on the freeway? That gives you plenty of time to log off, log on to the next tower, log off, log on to the next. You have hundreds of devices on one airplane logging off, logging on, logging off, logging on, logging off, logging on. You are creating all this congestion in the cell phone or mobile network. And what you are doing is you're taking up places and you are basically messing up the whole entire structure of uh, what's supposed to happen with cell phone networks because airplanes come in really fast and they take off really fast. And at those speeds, two, three, 400 miles per hour, when you are way up high, you are above the ceiling height of, of mobile networks. That's why you don't have any service up there. But it's because mobile networks broadcast sideways, not up. <laughs> They have no reason to broadcast up. That would uh, be a waste of energy. So they broadcast sideways, and it, it kind of creates a fan pattern like this, sideways. And you, on an airplane, along with everybody else, are logging on and logging off of all these different antennas along the way, which congests the network, and it creates a lot of problems. So guys, what I'm telling you is basically if they told you that it's because you interrupt communications with the tower, that's incorrect. They use a different type of radio than what your cell phone uses, and they use a different network than what your cell phone uses. They do not use a cell phone network to communicate with the tower. They use their own separate network. It's it, I'm not even going to go into that because it's very technical, but there is no interruption between cell phones and the tower. That is a myth. Uh, or a lie because they tell you that because they want you to log on and log off using airplane mode so that your phone isn't logging on and logging off of all the mobile networks around the airport because that creates a lot of problems for the community. So the way that they have staved this off is they tell you to put it in airplane mode, which doesn't communicate with the towers. And also the planes take off and, you know, kind of steep angles to get you out of that region and out of that realm of bandwidth as fast as possible. So anyway, guys, um, just clarifying something for you uh, that hasn't historically been very accurate. Cell phones, mobile phones, uh, they do communicate at a high frequency on their own network. They don't interrupt the planes, not the way that you think. If anything, older analog phones would possibly interrupt those uh, airplane networks. But that is old, old analog technology. You know, the big old phones that were really large. Um, that's because of the method that it um, communicates using analog signal. Anyway, guys, that's enough for this video. <laughs> I'm just going to give you an update. Uh, I did fly in. I had an interesting conversation with somebody about uh, mobile networks. And um, when they were telling us to put all our, our devices in airplane mode, I was just kind of shaking my head because what they were saying wasn't completely accurate. And some of the things I'm probably saying aren't completely accurate as well. But anyway, I hope you guys have an excellent day.